There is a South Park episode that is so universally hated, so despised, that its very own creators disowned it. Most people, I think, pretty much hated it. Yeah. It's the episode that we've all unanimously agreed just doesn't exist and should never be spoken about ever again. Until now. Yep, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the episode and the character of Pip. Oh, what jolly good fun! Besides Kenny, Pip was the original punching bag. He just didn't seem to really fit in, mostly because, well, he's a Dickensian British chap. Go away, Pip. Right ho. That French people piss me off. He appeared quite a bit in the earlier seasons, but after South Park's movie, poor old Pip was seen fewer and further between, all because another blonde-haired boy soon took his place. Oh, hey, fellas! Butters? So, nearing to the end of season four, the creators decided to give Pip a reintroduction with his very first ever starring episode. And it was just his luck that it is considered one of the worst episodes in South Park's history. It sealed Pip's fate as the most hated character in the series, leading him into his ultimate demise ten years later. I would like to see if you wouldn't mind not smashing our little town to bits. <laughs> but thinking about it now, did Pip really deserve all of the hate? Was his episode really that bad, or could it be an underrated classic? Let's take a look back at Pip's time in South Park. Pip's Origins While Matt Stone and Trey Parker's creation of South Park's characters go all the way back to the early 90s in the spirit of Christmas short films, Pip's character goes way back even further, to the 1860s. You see, his character was based on Philip Pirip, the protagonist of Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. And part of the brilliance of South Park as a show is that any ridiculous thing can and will be a character, whether it's Santa, Jesus, Satan, a talking towel, or a literal piece of poop. Howdy -ho! Therefore, a 19th century Victorian child, if anything, feels right at home in this weird and wonderful town in Colorado. But unlike these other weird characters, his place in the show goes all the way back to the 1996 Uned pilot where Pip was pushed into going down the slide by the boys only to fly headfirst into the swing set. <laughs> Good one, dumbass! Yeah. So less than 30 seconds into the world of South Park and Pip is already established as the series punching bag. God damn, I hate that kid. Even the school nurse didn't take poor Pip's injury very seriously. In fact, she even joins in with the bullying. Oh dear, I do hope he'll be okay. Shut up, Pip. Right up. In this pilot episode, Cartman gets a probe, these Pip scenes were unfortunately cut and he was reduced to a non-speaking role, his only prominent scene being when his hat was set on fire by one of Cartman's farts. And sadly, things would only get worse for poor Pip. Pip the Punching Bag In the first three seasons of South Park, Pip was featured in the title screen for every episode, therefore we could assume that there may have been plans for him to be one of the regulars. But they simply kept him as the one to be bullied. Go away, Pip. Nobody likes you. Yeah, what kind of name is Pip anyway? He was such a punching bag that when Damien, Satan's son, starts school, he is severely bullied, with his only friend being Pip. My name is Philip, but everyone calls me Pip because they hate me. Then I will call you Pip. Righto. But when he realizes that bullying his only friend would make the school like him, Damien summons demons from the fiery pits of hell to come and attack Pip. Oh, what a splendid party! Now, there was one glorious episode where Pip wasn't a total punching bag, which was season two's conjoined fetus lady. Here the school does some dodgeball, a sport that Pip has never even heard of, but as soon as the kids insult him for being French, Pip releases a demon of his own. God damn, maybe if you didn't eat all those croissants, you'd be able to get out! And if there's one way to anger an English person, it's to call them French. You shouldn't make fun of foreigners. And besides, I hate French people! Pip's uncontrollable anger leads the school into victory at the Denver State Dodgeball Competition, followed by winning nationals and then the world championship against China. This was a rare triumphant moment for downtrodden Pip, even if it did come at the expense of calling him French, which is perhaps the worst kind of bullying you could ever receive. So, you'd think from this point on that Pip would be more respected, right? South Park is the world champion in dodgeball! Oh, glorious day! Shut up, Pip. Yeah, shut up, Pip. Can we go home now? And only three episodes later, some of Pip's heartbreaking backstory is finally revealed. You see, my parents are dead. God damn you, sad Pip. <laughs> <laughs> 
Despite the creator's efforts in making Pip South Park's version of Millhouse, audiences just didn't care for him. And even though the creators may have believed that Pip being this wacky 19th century British character would be funny in itself, it just didn't work for neither the gags or the audiences. And over my time looking at various shows, I've realised that not only do most classic punching bags have more personality than Pip, but they still manage to fit into their own world despite still being an outcast. But the problem with Pip was that he was such a fish out of water character that it just took us out of the entire show whenever he appeared on screen. So, what happened to Pip after the first three seasons? Well, butters happened. It's very fitting that in the first episode where Butters had a significant supporting role, Pip was right there beside him to pass the torch. In season 3's Two Guys Naked in a Hot Tub, Stan's parents can't find him a babysitter, so they take him to the party to make him hang out with the kids in the basement. These three kids being Pip, Butters and Dougie, i.e. the Melvins, aka the lamest kids in school. But despite their initial differences, Stan and the Melvins did have a lot of fun playing Charlie's Angels, even managing to prevent the ATF from blowing up the party because they think it's a religious death cult. And as nice as it is watching an episode where Pip isn't picked on all of the time, the episode did also highlight just how much more entertaining and interesting Butters is compared to him. The creators have said multiple times that they love writing for Butters. His sweet innocence works so well against the likes of Carmen, and also Butters does try to defend himself in an almost naive way where we really root for him. Whereas Pip, Pip takes any insult that's thrown at him without a single fight. Yes, can I have some tea, please? You don't drink tea at a baseball game, you French piece of crap. Oh, very well. And after a while, it just gets pretty boring, and a lot of the times, it feels that he wasn't really a part of the conversation because he's so disconnected. And so, this episode would be the last one where Pip played a key role. That is until his very own one. Pip's very own episode. While in the first three seasons, Pip certainly wasn't the most popular character in South Park, the event that completely demolished any good feelings towards him was season 4's simply titled Pip. According to South Park's DVD commentary, Matt and Trey had been wanting to do an episode of an abridged version of Dickens' Great Expectations since the series' inception. And we, we talked about doing this from the very beginning. We're like, we should just take that little Pip kid and basically just do Great Expectations South right. Park style. Mm -hmm. Now, as a refresher, the novel tells a story of how the character of Pip grows up from being a downtrodden young boy into a high member of society in London. An opportunity given to him thanks to the kindness he showed others as a child. Shows adapting classic stories, especially Dickens, is nothing new. In fact, A Christmas Carol has been adapted by Mr. Magoo, The Flintstones, The Muppets, and even Mickey Mouse, so it's not too ridiculous to see why South Park chose to adapt a Dickens book. I mean, other adult animated shows like Family Guy and The Simpsons have also made entire episodes adapting classic tales, so why not South Park? So let's set the stage. The episode of Pip opens with acting legend Malcolm McDowell introducing himself. Hello, I'm a British person. He explains to the audience that they're in for something different tonight. Pip's origin story in a retelling of Great Expectations. And once the episode begins, we get a version of Great Expectations that's pretty straightforward and loyal to the book. Every character in the story is pretty accurate too, just with a jaunt of South Park humour. I've come to answer the want ad. Is that so, you smelly little bastard? What? And while the adaptation episodes from Family Guy and The Simpsons aren't considered their best, they at least adapted three stories into one episode, which makes it far easier to digest. They also had their own characters in the roles of the characters from the classic stories, whereas South Park's core four were nowhere to be seen here. In fact, the only recognisable South Park character is Pip himself, i.e. the show's least favourite character. This and the creator's insistence on having the Great Expectation characters appear book accurate instead of having their South Park characters in the roles was a big reason why the episode went down with such infamy. You kind of have to figure out a way to do it with the characters you've established or people don't like it as much. Yeah. There was going to be a point where Cartman would have a small role, which we can see in this original storyboard right here. The opener had Pip telling his life story through a school presentation using a big pile of papers, to which Cartman remarks, Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, this is going to take our damn day. It was still going to have the whole story, but it just contextualised why it was being told. 
Stone and Parker explained why they didn't keep it, stating that it would make the episode feel too formulaic. But like, imagine being all excited to sit back and watch the new episode of South Park and this is the episode. You're probably gonna wonder what the hell is going on. Granted, for those who made it to the second half of the episode, you did at least get to see some robot monkeys and Miss Havisham turn into, well, not quite the classic Dickens villain. But even still, I don't believe that the retelling went hard enough in terms of South Park's humour in order to keep their consistent audience engaged. Even Matt and Trey themselves have expressed some regrets about the episode. So this episode, yeah, I really can't explain this at all. This is actually probably one of the least popular episodes of South Park that we ever <laughs> produced. But Stone still mostly liked it, adding, I don't hate it, but it was like, why did you guys do that? I mean, it takes, you know, the production staff twice as much work to do, and everyone just hates it. I actually only watched this episode for the first time recently, and after hearing about how terrible it was, I was expecting a total, total stinker. But you know what? I didn't actually mind it. In fact, I laughed out loud a few times. Although this might just be that I went in with not so great expectations. And while I definitely don't believe that Pip is a misunderstood South Park classic, it did still have its moments. Like, this dinner scene had me in stitches. One should never pull out the wee-wee and check it for scabs while it's to the table. Terribly sorry, Pocket. Not at all, I'm sure. And I would much rather rewatch Pip than a fair few other South Park episodes. The one thing we can take from Pip was that it walked so other better episodes could run, especially one centering on supporting characters like season 5's Buds' very own episode. Everyone knows it's Buds. Me. The end of Pip. The attempt of reintroducing Pip with his own episode actually turned out to be a death sentence for him as a prominent supporting character in South Park. Therefore, his last speaking role was in season 6's Professor Chaos, where he was briefly considered as Kenny's successor as the fourth member of the main group. Just some crumpets then. All right, that does it. Pip, get the fudge out. Next. And for the next eight seasons, Pip was pushed the fudge out and even further into the background, not speaking a line until season 14's 201. As Mecha Streisand wreaks havoc onto South Park, we see Pip, of all people, make his return to the series by pleading to the machine not to destroy their town. Would this be the comeback he needed? Will this show the bravery he's been concealing all along? Or... <coughs> In interviews about the show, Trey and Matt have often said that they don't actually like the first three seasons of South Park, especially not compared to the ones that came after it. And that's probably because they were still learning on how to tell compelling stories, as well as create great characters. The one thing I can say about Pip is that he's one of the best examples of an idea that had good intentions, but it just fell flat. But the mistakes they made with Pip helped them develop the likes of Butters into a main character, and was able to make the series better as a whole. And unfortunately, we've come to the end of the video. Do let me know what you think of Pip and if he should be brought back in the comments. And if you like this video, then please give it a good thumbs up as it really does genuinely help me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.